It's two for Tuesday. Today we're going to look at some case copper locks. This is a used one that I got off of eBay. This is one of the copper lock minis. These are really nice knives. This one is in True Sharp. I'll give you a look at it. Very nice knife. But when I go to grab this knife, I wish it was just a little bit bigger. Just a little bit. It almost has enough handle. It's very usable, but just a little bit more handle and it would be a wonderful knife. So let's see what we can do about that. I have this very special oven. We're going to put the knife in there. We're going to set it for one and a half times larger. And we'll wait for that timer to run out. Okay. The timer's gone off and we're ready to take the knife out of the oven. Would you look at that? Now when I put it in my hand, that's perfect. Now that handle is the length of my hand. Now it's a perfect knife. All kidding aside, I found these pair of knives on eBay is used. I didn't plan on getting them both in the same color. It just was dumb luck. I didn't even realize it until I opened the packages. They were two separate orders and I was actually a bit surprised that they turned out to be exactly the same. It actually looks like one is an enlarged version of the other. Now both of these knives had some problems. There's a reason why they were used knives and I got them at a cheap price. This one, the blade was loose. The blade was so loose that you could grab it and wiggle it around and it would go from one liner to the other liner. Just, just loose in there. Now it's tight. Now, now this knife won't move at all. This one here also was very loose in the pivot. And what was even worse about this knife is when you closed it, this knife was rubbing the liner on this one side, on the left-hand side here, very hard. So I took a chance on this one, on fixing it, and it paid off, because now that alignment is pretty good. As you can see, that's just about dead center. This one is close. You open and close it one time. This one is close, but as you can see, it favors the right-hand side a little bit. So it's not perfect, but it's it's very good. That's very good for a case knife. I'm completely satisfied with how that is centered. Let me take you through the process that I used on these knives. I'm going to have to do this holding the camera. What I did is I used the anvil on the vise. You need a, a heavy metal object, something that's solid. When you pound on it, you know, it won't move. Another, another acceptable substitute would be a three pound mini sledge or anything larger laid down on its side, just as long as you have a flat, heavy metal surface. What you do is I put a, put a piece of tape to help protect the knife a little bit, lay the knife on there and hold it with one hand and then take a ball peen hammer and start tapping right on the pin. That will push it together and slightly mushroom this pin so it holds and it stays. If you just squeeze the bolsters together, the knife will quickly loosen. I mean, I've tried that and the only solution to make it a permanent repair is to actually tap on that pin and peen it over a little bit more. So that's the process in tightening the pivot. Now the hammer that I had sitting on the table, that wasn't a ball peen hammer. That was just a standard hammer. But you know when, when you tighten that pin, you want to use a ball peen hammer. It's got the right shape. On this larger of the two copper locks, even after tightening the pivot, the blade was still rubbing hard against the liner on this side. So I took a, um, a step to try and correct this. The frame almost looked like it was um, had a slight bow to it. So I took a pair of pliers that was handy 
and I laid the knife like this and then I took my foot just a bare just a stocking foot put my toes down and put my heel against the knife and pushed and rocked down on it about a half a dozen times now I weigh about 220 pounds and I put most of my weight on that as I was rocking on it that's what it took to straighten it out but after doing that as you can see that blade is very nicely centered so that was a risky risky step to take now, I wouldn't recommend doing what I did to that knife it's very risky the bone could have cracked the frame could have broken there's a lot of things that could have gone very wrong in doing that but as it was I counted the knife as trash so I wasn't worried about it and it was cheap enough you know if I messed it up I messed it up no big loss so with those modifications it really paid off so now I have a beautiful pair of copper locks at a very reasonable price it's a two for one deal and these large copper locks, you can't find them anymore. I mean, I've looked in different stores and every place seems to be out of them. It's the secondary market or on eBay is where you can find them. And they seem to be charging a little bit more money than I want to pay for them. So by going this route and getting knives that were not in good shape, that are known bad, I was able to get the knife and restore it and fix it and get two for the price of one new mini copper lock I mean, these minis are great knives now I did have to lightly sand the bolsters down after peening them with the hammer I did some with 240 grit moved up to 600 grit and then I hit it with a strop with compound what I needed is another step in between I needed some 1200 grit which I didn't have but there's still some really really fine scratches I mean, it's polished but it's not quite at the level that I would want now this knife had some other problems too along with the loose pivot and the bent frame it was all dinged up from keys in here and on the back See if I can get this to where you can see it a little bit. I did a light sanding. It was really dinged up right in this area with keys. Now all you can see here is a couple little tiny pits and it's very smooth now. So I sanded that all down and polished it back up. Same thing here on the front bolster on the rounded portion. It actually had catches on it that when you run your finger over it would it would get stuck so that's how you restore these knives that's how you can work with them and the different things that you can do so if you have a chance to get any of these copper locks I'd advise you to get them because these are getting harder and harder to find so I'd get one now if you have any desire for a large copper lock I mean they may be available again in the future they may just be between production runs right now but I don't know if you want one I would say get it these minis are great I really like this knife you don't even know it's in your pocket they're so small and they're so light but I prefer the larger one just like as in most knives I like a knife that has a good grip that I can get a full hand on to me that makes a knife enjoyable to use a good secure grip means you have better control over the knife and you have much better knife safety as a result if you can control the knife because it's comfortable and your hands don't get fatigued you're far less likely to slip and have an accident so get you some of these copper locks while you still can these are awesome little knives they're so thin they're very lightweight they have a beautiful blade There's not much work that you need to do that you can't get done with one of these. Let's take a look at some specs on these knives. The larger copper lock has about a two and seven eighths inch blade, four and a quarter inch handle, and is seven and a quarter inches overall. 
the small copper lock. It's about a two and a half inch blade, a three and a half inch handle, and six and a quarter inches overall. Both of these are very thin. You hardly even know they're in your pocket. They're wonderful knives. So take a look on the secondary market and don't be afraid to get one like this that's not perfect and needs a little bit of work. Buy it as a project knife and experiment. You know, there's nothing wrong with learning, with trying new things. And if you can get a knife for half the price or like here, get two for one, you know, that's a bargain deal. It just takes a little bit of work on your part to restore them. And these knives are good as new now. These things are beautiful. There's still some scratches on the blade here, which I could always polish out if I wanted to. But they're in nice shape. The locks are, there's no movement at all in either knife. Both of these things are excellent. They're beautiful. And they were cheap. And like I said earlier, it's just dumb luck that they both ended up looking nearly identical. Just one a little bit larger than the other. If it wasn't for the size difference, it would actually be hard to tell these things apart. They're so close to one another. Even just the coloring of the bone, everything is almost exactly identical. These are really nice knives to carry. They're so light, they disappear in your pocket. Put it in a small slip and you won't even know you have it with you. But you always have a good knife that's ready anytime you need one. I would highly advise that you pick one of these up if you don't have it. Either one is fine, but if you can, you can find a good deal and get both like I did, do it. You won't be sorry. We'll see you on the next one.